Hi everyone, thanks for joining the product demo. My name is Rebecca, I'm the product manager of Vectors e-mobility infrastructure products and today I want to show you how you can flawlessly operate your charging infrastructure, in this case especially your bus depot, with our charging solutions. So what you need for that, first I want to show you our controller, which is the VSEC. It's a charging station controller which can manage two charging points at a time. And our no newest product, which I want to show you, is the VSEC Single. The VSEC Single is currently a plug-on board, which you can plug on to a baseboard for managing, for example, DC wall boxes. And on my desktop, you see VCharm, which is our charging station management system. And now let's dive right into it. This is our dashboard. On the left side, you see the charging stations that we are currently managing. We have two depots, one depot at the city center and one depot in the north. And in the middle, we see the operational status of our charging points, how many of them are currently in use, how many are available and how many are inoperative. And on the right side, you see the current power consumption. Now, I got a notification here that I have two new charging stations, which are my controllers that I just connected to my laptop. And here you see they are identified via their OCPP ID. So the first one is the VSEC and the second one is the VSEC single. And now I want to add them to my charging infrastructure. First, I'm choosing to which location, so I want to set them up in the city center. And here you can see already that they have two charging points. As I said, the VSEC is able to supply two charging points, either CCS or CHAdeMO at a time. And now I want to give them a name, so I'm calling this one VSEC. And I'm allowing it a maximum power of 150 kilowatt. This is needed later on for load management. And then you see the VSEC is appearing down here. And the same I want to do with the VSEC single. I'm also adding it to the city center. And here you see it's only um, possible to supply one charge point at a time. And this one I'm also naming. This is the VSEC single. And I'm allowing it also 150 kilowatts. And then you can see that they're appearing here and that they are displayed as connected, as available, the VSEC for two charging points, fully operational, and the VSEC single for one charging point. And because I have them here now in front of me, no, no power electronics connected, so currently no, no power consumption can be measured. So when looking at the whole bus depot, um, we allow you to perform load balancing and we also invite you to use some of our predefined charging strategies. So when you are um, configuring your bus depots or your, your in general your depots, you can choose how much maximum kilowatts they are allowed um, to charge over all the charging stations and you can choose from a charging mode. So we developed different charging modes um, that you can choose from for load balancing. And here we chose the charging mode bus depot. This one is um, taking into account the time when the vehicles have to leave again. And so we are managing the charging schedules accordingly so that the vehicle that needs to leave first is also f uh, finished charging first. And you can configure that also per depot. Um, you can set the maximum power, um, which is split among the charging stations. And then you can choose from other charging modes, such as balance, for example. There, all the charging stations are getting the same amount of energy. And you can also disable load management. As I said, we want to look at the bus depot use case. So when going down on our dashboard here, you see our charging points and how they are utilized now in the past and in the next few hours. So you see if a vehicle is currently connected and if it's charging, you can click here for some more information about the SOC, about the arrival time and when it's going to leave again. And we also have enabled a mechanism for a feedback. So here we are getting a warning that the SOC cannot be reached as planned. Um, this is the case when, for example, too many buses have to leave early and we are not 
able to supply the required amount of energy in that short time. The data exchange here to the depot management systems is over either the VDV463, which is a German standard, or we can also supply the information via a REST interface. So when talking about buses, we can now take a look at our vehicles. Um, on the left side, we see the vehicles that are currently on in the depot, and we also see the vehicles that are currently on the road. And when looking at the vehicles, um, we can get some more detailed information and we can also perform preconditioning according to VDV261. So let's look at this vehicle. It's currently connected to our charging station and it's also connected to the value-added service server and it's currently charging. It has been connected for 20 minutes, which we see on the right side. And we also have a visualization of how much is the current SOC and how much is the target SOC. Um, so we have a little battery here to show that. And then when you want to perform preconditioning for buses, this is especially important to take the energy here from the charging station instead of the battery, because otherwise the battery would be low, it would be empty very fast. So we can choose here if you want to do preconditioning, and then we have different levels um, regarding, for example, heating or cooling or ventilation. So you can choose what kind of preconditioning you want to do. You can choose the departure time, and you can also enable um, a target SOC, which you want to still have at the end. And when we want to have more information on the vehicle and the preconditioning, we have some detailed view here where you see also, for example, the automator information, how much energy was required, how much time is required, um, and yeah, further information. So this is for planning with your buses. In general, we also have many monitoring functions. So when going back to the charging stations, we here at the lower part have an overview on ongoing requests. So we can set the availability of our charging stations. For example, when we want to do some maintenance, we can set them to unavailable. We can restart them, update certificates. And this is here what uh, a lock, what is currently happening or what has happened in the past. And we can also get detailed information on every ongoing request. And we also have an event history for errors. We define different severity levels for the errors and we can also look at more details there and then, of course, react upon it. And you also get notifications here. You see what happened in your charging stations and you can also get some detailed information here. Or what we have also developed is an application. Um, so this is our application currently available for iOS. And you can also see the charge points and you also get no push notifications here if something is happening in your charging infrastructure. And when you want to perform some reporting, we also have a comprehensive reporting. You can choose from reports about the charge energy. You can get some statistics about your charging sessions or some detailed views. Um, we provide a charge detail record for the purpose of billing. And you can also get reports on the availability. You can download the reports or share them to your colleagues via a link and then perform some further analysis. That was a quick overview of what we can offer currently with our charging infrastructure products. If you have more questions, feel free to contact us anytime. And we are also happy to give you some more detailed view on our products. Thank you.